Life Quest this last week. I know we got uh, we got the uh, we got the game of life going here. We know that uh, Sir and Daniel spun that dial and they got wham, you're married, right? <laughs> and then they, they got the you got a you got a little black car, right? You didn't get a pink one or a blue one, but you got a little black car and you took off and you went north. Did you have a good time? Awesome. awesome. And then um, you planned on the kid yet? Yeah, just, did you, yeah, did you, you had a car seat yet, or anything like that. We you know, you know, you know, you know. <laughs> See, I, I can never play. I can never. I can never play the game because we didn't have enough room in the cars. There was only room for six pegs, and we had eight. I had to have two cars. I had to kind of hook them up and pull them down the game. But anyway, so we had. Uh, we, it's good to have you guys back. I trust you had a good time. It's good that the Lord brought you back safe and sound. And uh, we know that uh, that we are in this life quest, and we know that what is the, what is a quest? What is a quest? Search. Search of something, right? And what are we out? Of, what ought we be in search of? We ought to be in search of something, and that's what. Lord, in search of the Lord. What the Lord would have us do? What What would the Lord have for us in our lives? Um, we've been talking about uh, how uh, we want to be a child again. We're talking about not wanting to grow up and not take on responsibility and such, and and how our the, the, our culture in this world today is really got things kind of turned upside down. Um, last week we left off and we were talking a little bit. I got to get where we left off here so I can talk about what we talked about. <clears throat> uh, last week we were talking about uh, oh, a tr the transition into adulthood. Do we know ever, anybody ever see a child throw a temper tantrum? You tell them they got to pick up their toys or they got to do something and they throw a little fit. Yeah. <laughs> and we talked about what? How's that look? Well, it looks childish, don't it? Um, so much, so much to do. The poor child has to pick up his blocks, right? And we think about, uh, we think about as as people turn into young adults and they hit their twenties or whatever, and they don't want to grow up, right? That they when, when they have to uh, go through life. We look at our, we look at our culture today, and it's a culture of uh, fun and not having to take on responsibility. Um, they have a hard time transitioning into adulthood. And uh, we think about transitioning into adulthood, there's, there's so much going on. There's, there's so many challenges, so many choices. There's so much information. We talked about information that's available. And if it's on the internet, it's got to be good, right? It's got to be right information, right? Yeah, right, right. So you think about all the information that people have to, to absorb. But we had, a, we had our uh, conference this spring with, uh, we had our guest speakers, and we had one of our guest speakers, and what did he say? It was, go what? Go to the book. Go to the book. Yeah, that was great. That was Brother Humphreys, right? He had, a, he had a message. Go to the book. That's where you find the right information. If you're seeking uh, what God would have you to do in your life, you've got to go to the book. <coughs> Uh, there's things you can look up on the Internet, and there's things that are valid, but if they don't go along with the book, they're bad. It's bad information, right? <clears throat> so, um, but the sheer magnitude of choices that young adults are fa have today and face today, um, they can get the wrong information, and it can uh, cause problems in their lives, and uh, it can give, it can threaten their uh, their future uh, with uh, with disaster. Think of that snake. He didn't think far enough in advance when he was he was trying to just get away, but. He started crawling across that pavement. It kept getting hotter and hotter, and the longer he went, the more trouble he got into until he, he was sizzled. Um, you turn around and you think about it, and that's how uh, our young lives. Now, some of us, we're older now, right? Maybe we're supposed to be wiser, or a little gray, maybe. I don't know, but we can look back in our lives. I bet you us the older, the older ones here, we can look back in our lives, and I'm sure we can probably find some mistakes that we made, can't we? Yep. And so... These are just all kind of information for, uh, and even as young, even as adults, we can still kind of slide back to the one to kind of go back to being a child again, <clears throat> and with responsibility. But, but as we grow up, we face, we have to uh, face responsibility. Uh, we think about the thought of um, uh, the generation that's, that's postponing adulthood and overstaying the land of child and the land of their childhood. As, as God's people, we can't afford to do this. We need to uh, be good examples. Um, and it might seem like it's uh, emotionally safer for the moment, uh, but there's a great loss of the blessings that you can receive 
living and walking the way the Lord would have you to walk and serving Him. And if you do slide backwards and uh, stay as a, as, a, as a child or stay down and don't want to grow up, you'll have you'll have uh, you'll have repercussions. You might say there'll be there'll be consequences. It's never too late to turn back and to turn to serving the Lord and to and to embrace what He has for you. Now, we talked last week a little bit in closing. What did we talk about? I had an assignment. What was the assignment? Do you remember? Make a list of things that God has made and Satan has counterfeited. Yes, very good. Jenny gets a star at the end of the class here. We'll have her, uh, I better get some stars, right? Some little sticky things, right? All right, no, but she's so much correct, right? We think about life. We think about this world. We think about ultimately what... What uh, what ha what was Satan's what is Satan's ultimate goal? What is he? What is Satan's objective or his desire? Well, yeah, he wants to do that, but but in redoing that, he wants to be seen as God. He wants to be seen as all powerful, don't he? And in doing that, he's trying to remove uh, the things of God, and he's counterfeiting counterfeiting the things that God has that has put in place. <clears throat> Let's think of that. Now we got. Uh, we got some scriptures here. The Father, we think about the Father. If it's something that's counterfeit, it's a lie, right? It's a fake, right? So let's go to, um, oh, let's go to uh, John 8, 44. We read it last week. Let's read it again and start getting started. We, we see here, what do we see here? <clears throat> John 8, 44. We'll start with uh, Mr. B, please. Yes, sir. John 8. You said 44? John 8, 44, yes. John 8, 44 says, Ye and your father the devil, and the lust of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own. For he is a liar, and the father of it. All right. So uh, we see here that his father lies. Um, we, we know here that um, Satan's objective here is uh, he desires to be glorified as God. Uh, Isaiah 14, 14. Let's look at that one. Isaiah 14, 14. All right, so we see here his objective is to uh, to be as God. He, he wants to be seen as a God, and in doing so, he is he is throwing a lot of counterfeit stuff out there. And if it's counterfeit, what's something? If it's counterfeit, what is it? Fake. It's fake. It's a knockoff. It's it's they're trying to make it look like something it isn't, aren't they? So uh, we think about what are some of the things that Satan has counterfeited in this world or placed in this world as a counterfeit? Jared. Uh, a lot of counterfeit science going on these days. Uh, yeah, a lot of counterfeit. Evolution, we were from monkeys and all this, and then uh, climate change, uh, you know, what kind of... Well, when we started our, our talking, we talked about the, uh, the, the culture, uh, we talked about the collective culture coma. That's hard to say fast, you know? And what were, there was five, there was one, two, three, four, five, there were six things we start, talked about, seven things we talked about. What was the first one? If you look back in your book, take away our God, and then B was that evolved from nothing. And we think about creation. <clears throat> Just talking about creation. There's a, there's a counterfeit to uh, creation and it's evolution. So very good. What else do we have? Marriage. Marriage. Now, how does he counterfeit that? people think it's okay for same-sex marriage. Oh, yeah, he's counted for that. And how else has he done it? There's two ways he did that. You're, you're correct for that one. But how else has he done it? People don't even get married anymore. People don't even get married anymore. They just live together, whatever you want to call it. Uh, that's a counterfeit, right? That, that's not, that's not, was, that wasn't God's intention, was it? We have scriptures that we can go with that. We'll get into those probably more later. All right, let's, uh, so we got, uh, we got, um, we got marriage, we got uh, creation. What else we got? <clears throat> what 
what else? What else is counterfeit in this world today? Truth. Truth? Yeah, there's truth. What kind of truth? Let's think of some different kinds of truths that have been counterfeited. Well, like what? God's truth. Huh? God's no, very good. Yes, God's word. Think of God's word. Think of the different doctrines and religious beliefs that are being taught that are knockoffs, that are not, not, they don't, they're kind of true, but they're not totally true according to God's word. Go to the book. If it don't line up with the book, it's, uh, it, it's, it's probably not true, right? Or it's probably, it isn't true. We won't say probably. We won't leave any room for error on that. We'll say it's not true if it don't line up with God's word. All right, but there's certainly um, not, there's untruths, okay? Um, Sister Janet kind of talked about it a little bit here, one I wrote down. How about family? Well, he's counterfeited that, hasn't he? We've got, it's all kind of messed up now for families, isn't it? What, what is a family? What, what is really, what is a family? Or what is a family in God's eyes? Husband and wife, children. Children, yeah. Um, in, this, in the world we live in today, it's, it's all kind of confused. In the, 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 the culture we live in today, there's, it, it's, 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 um, it could be two, two partners the same sex, could be, uh, it, it could be anything. I mean, it's, it's just there's no, it, it's confusion. Um, what else do we have? There's another area. Right to choose, like, if you want to kill your baby or not. Yeah. Choice. Yeah, and that goes back to the part of the 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 the, uh, the oh I say the the lack of the knowledge of family, the lack of uh, marriage, the, the responsibilities that come with marriage, and the the, the the what's the word I'm looking for? I'll think of it in a minute. Because um, <clears throat> we're going to cover this a few more times here and again in a few minutes, but we're just going to get it, we're getting a, 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 a list here. Um, so how about? Uh, as far as it goes, as far as uh, counterfeit, there's a counterfeit thoughts as far as, how about um, finances? Or how about, how about what you have nowadays? Um, how about hard work versus easy, easy money? You think about, you know, how, what does God's word say about, about uh, work? Man shall not eat. Or oh, yeah. Not eat. yeah. Man shall not work, he shall not eat, right? But what, is, what does the world culture today government handouts they got you got handouts or freebies or well, so you're entitled to right entitlement yeah, <laughs> entitlements that's one thing that's hard for me i i will help anybody and i'll gladly help anybody and we ought to help people that have a need but people ought not have the thoughts that they're entitled to anything or that, that they're owed anything mm -hmm. um again i will gladly desire to help anybody that has a need but but, you know, they need to be responsible, right? Um, and, so, and some of that is learned. Some of that is um, um, something that uh, you have to learn and, and train people with. But, but it's, 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 like it's certainly been counterfeited. So we, got, uh, we, got, uh, we, got, we covered the doctrine. We think of the different doctrine. Um, how about uh, just different, just morals in general, you know? Saints counterfeited almost every moral you could probably have to make it look right. So <clears throat> that's a pretty good list that we have so far. <coughs> Anybody has anything else they want to add to it? Just go ahead and let me know. But anybody? Good list, guys. Anybody I was going to say wisdom. Wisdom? Oh, There's yeah. a way that seems right unto man, but the ways thereof are... That's, that's a very good thought. There's a way that seems right unto man. Go to the book, right? Wisdom. So, and uh, there's a counterfeit to the thought of wisdom and uh, different uh, thoughts and, and beliefs and doctrines and teachings. So, um, so let's take a second here and we think about it. Uh, um, there's, a there's a generation today that's choosing immaturity over maturity, choosing irresponsibility over responsibility. And each of those things that we kind of mentioned, there's a responsibility. There's immaturity, that's the deception side, and there's a maturity, that's the responsible side. And um, we, we're going to talk about those some more too, but, um, but it, of course it's easier, and it, um, let me see here. Um, it's easier, it's more fun, but it's the wrong choice. Um, and does it mean that 
if you're responsible and if you're serving the Lord, you're not going to have any fun in life? Is that what that means? Heavens no. It doesn't mean that at all. In fact, life can be more joyous and more rewarding if you're serving the Lord because you know you're doing it uh, the right way and you have his blessings and you're not kind of like looking over your shoulder. Or anybody ever do anything wrong and kind of feel some kind of guilt about it or something and kind of wonder if anybody's seen? Anybody ever have that feeling? And your boss texts you and says, can you come to the office tomorrow? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and all this stuff. So, so as God's people, it's definitely good to be doing things by going to the book, going do it, doing it God's way, you'll be you'll have a peace, you'll have a you'll have a calm about it, and uh, you'll have a joy, knowing that you're right with the Lord. <clears throat> um, but of course, uh, like I say, uh, it, it, um, it's gonna it's the wrong choice if you if you go accord, uh, not according to God's word. Um, we have the thought here that. Um, if you take the easy way out, or if you take the uh, the irresponsible way out, it prevents you, it prevents the future from unfolding the way God has intended it to perform, or the way that God has intended it to unfold for you. And it morphs into a life that is a distorted mess. And we think about the uh, again the complications, the things that if you uh, I'll say you take the easy money route. Let's say you don't want to work. Let's say you take one. How can you get easy money in the world today? Claim unemployment. Huh? Claim unemployment. Claim unemployment. Let's think of something that's maybe, um, well, sell drugs. selling drugs. There you go. Yeah, you can do the government thing or you can sell drugs. I mean, there's quick money, right? Not God's way, though, is it? And it um, and what's it going to be when it catches up to you? Sin or what? What does what what God's word say about sin? It'll find you out. And when it catches up to you, the easy money thing, and you've been doing it the wrong way, not according to the book, not according to God's word, what happens when it catches up to you? Consequences. What are the consequences if you get caught? Jail time, prison time, lots of troubles. Bad, bad reputation for your family. Uh, black eye for your family, whatever. I mean, you, there's just <clears throat> there's just things that'll it'll it'll prevent, it'll cause problems and make a mess. Um, <clears throat> and we can also apply this to spiritual growth too. You know, we do we do we want to grow up in our spiritual growth, or do we want to remain as a child and not not grow up? Um, <clears throat> let's see here. <clears throat> And we can think about it. And if you if you want to think about it as it's maybe it's more convenient, less stressful, you know, more comfortable at the moment, but the prices that you'll have to pay in the end will be high. All right. So let's take a moment. We're going to take a moment. We're going to talk about. Uh, there, this is kind of going to be broke up in three uh, three sections. And the first section we're kind of talking about is um, five basic reasons why the. Uh, um, culture, canceled culture, cold, I can't even pronounce it. Canceled culture um, is postponing adults as long as possible. So why, why does it do that? Well, they don't want to grow up why? They don't want the responsibility. But what do they want? What what does what the young adults want? They they don't they want to not have the responsibility, but they want the what? They want to have it all. Benefits. They want the benefits and the pleasures of the of, of the other way. Can it? And how's that go? You can't have your cake and eat it too, or something like that. Is that one? Is that the American proverb? It's not a proverb in here, but it's it's the American proverb. But but uh, so. Um, <clears throat> Let's take a look, see here. I'm going to do something that I don't, we're going to kind of mix, mix things up a little bit here today. One of the things I used to do, and I think people probably do, when you go through uh, and you're doing your lesson, what do you do? What did you do when you're doing your homework back in the day? At least I don't know what I used to do. Yeah, I read the questions. Yeah, so let's go. I know the answer. Yeah, so let's take a moment. Let's go back. We're going to read our study questions, and as, so as we can continue to move forward, you can kind of be thinking of these things, maybe jot some things down if you see the question. Uh, we're not answering the questions right now. We're just going to read them. And if you got a thought, you can throw a thought out there. But let's read the questions. And um, as we do our study, 
if you see something that you could, or something sparks your mind to write down in your questions, then you'll have it for when we go through them. But, but uh, question number one, Chris, can you read that for us, please? <clears throat> So I actually don't know where we're at. Okay, we're going to read the study questions. I don't know what page you're on in your book. Jordan, yeah, Jordan's got the book all made up, and I, I'm, I don't have that. No page book. number eight. Page yeah. number eight. So on page number eight, we're just going to read the questions that are at the end of the study. How has culture attacked your faith and tried to shape your belief in God? All right, so think about that. Think in your life and think about culture and think about how, how we don't have the answer right now, but just think about it. I mean, if you have a thought and you want to spit it out, go ahead. We're, we're good. I encourage and I, I'm going to encourage a lot of interaction here, a lot of, a lot of talking. If you want, there's no such thing as a silly question or a silly thought or we're just talking. All right? Um, all right? Anybody have a thought on that? Has anybody experienced in their life or thought uh, what we're talking about has uh, maybe uh, attacked their faith or tried to shake their belief? Well, I can tell you right away in public school, one of the first things they teach about is evolution. And that yeah. was one of the things that at least I always thought. Yep. I, I was lucky to have some teachers that, you know, yeah. went, went along with uh, the idea that God created the world. So I was just really lucky to class that teachers that well, that's good. said, yeah, this isn't necessarily true. They called them theories. Though. Yeah, the I mean, theory they... theory of evolution, they didn't say this is fact. Yeah. Theory, but they teach us back. Yeah, they, they, they attempt to. So, yeah. So, uh, definitely, that is definitely, a, it can be trying on your faith. It can cause doubt, right? Anything that um, that would cause doubt, for sure. You know, dinosaurs. One in the library and seeing, you know, a whole shell of dinosaur books. You know, that, that doesn't rattle you up with that. You know, yeah. I certainly, before um, the Creation Museum, never thought of dinosaurs being out of Noah's Ark. <laughs> you know, just saying. Yeah, yeah so I mean, there's, a, there's a lot of questions that who knows if we yeah. get to ask God questions and or if we'll men, understand you know, the future. Finding all these different, you know, cavemen and all the evidence of that. You know, there's yeah. so many things. So, yeah, there's uh, that. that's definitely a way that they've done it. Any others? Days of creation and another, you know, God could in six days. You know. Yeah, I have. It's kind of funny because I have an easier time believing that there's a creator than throw a bunch of stuff in the air and have a collide, mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden you have human life. That's really hard. Yeah, nothing blew up and created. Yeah, <laughs> take take a bag of bolts and fenders and put it in a box and shake it up, roll it around, and you're gonna have a nice. Uh, you'll have a nice what Cadillac Deville or something, right? I don't think so. It's I not gonna tell you, that. I can tell you one thing: when I take apart an engine. If I take all those pieces and throw them on the ground and I come back a year later, they're still going to be exactly where I left them. They're going to be already left them and they certainly ain't going to put, they're certainly not going to assemble themselves without a doubt. Yeah, they'll be decayed too, yeah. <laughs> they'll be rusted, yeah. corrupted, rusted, rusted and corrupted. And yeah. I have to replace them stuff now. All right. So we're going to, there's more that we're going to write down, but just kind of think about that. And if you think of as we go through these, you can kind of jot things down. So number two, what's number two? Why don't you want to read question number two for us in our study? Sure. What mistakes or dynamics have you seen in the lives of others that cause you to be more fearful for, of your future? All right, so we think about that, oh, this ought to be easy, because it's always easy to see the mistakes in other people. So this ought to be an easy one, right? Because it, it, it can be stuff that you make. Huh? Because you can see the lives of others. Oh, yeah, you can see, like, uh, oh, man, you can just see it clear as day. Oh, man, you know, that's, that's this. So and so should have made it for this message, because they could have really used it, you know? Yeah, we got to be careful of that. But it's in this one here, but where there's definitely things that we can see. Think of this culture called cancel culture. Anyway, keep going. <laughs> anyway, you think of it and you think about the, the, the troubles you see in people's lives. And you think about, uh, um, you know, think about the future. All right. Um, and then K number three, question number three. Seth, you want to read that for us? In what ways do you feel you are unprepared for a successful adulthood? All right, and, and maybe you don't feel unprepared. Maybe you, uh, maybe you have it all together. I don't know, but these are just all thoughts and sparks to, to kind of get our get our minds turning. And, uh, and and are we in the life quest that God would have us to be in? Are we are we making all the decisions 
uh, that we want to make? Are we uh, submissive and mature and, and submissive to authority and uh, desiring to do and be where the Lord would have us to be? Uh, okay, number four. Think about this one. Uh, we probably could all answer this one, but we're not going to just yet. Unless you want to, you can say something. But Dishes. Oh, oh man, it's taking that same uh, <laughs> dishes every night. Oh, you do not. Uh, I want to be a child again. I didn't have to, I could just have a snack and not have to do dishes afterwards, right? There we go. Okay, so let's think of number four. What's question four? Um, Daryl, you want to read question four for us, please? Yeah. What responsibilities has God placed in your life that are not really fun? Whew. Pretty much wow. all responsibilities. Say what? <laughs> Pretty much all responsibilities. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah, it's not all bad. We can't, we can't think of it's all bad. But there are definitely responsibilities that we have in our lives and things that we have in our lives that, that are not really fun. But are you going to be mature? Or are you going to be mature? Are you going to be as a child? Or are you going to be as an adult? All right. Number five. Um, let me see here. Let's go ahead at uh, number five. I don't know. Uh, do you want to read it? Okay, question five. Did you read that for us, Brenda? Yeah. List some of the places you have, you would ha pay if you failed to embrace responsibility as God would have you to do. All right. So let's think about that. Think about some of the prices you might have paid. If you failed to embrace and walk the path, the, the quest that God would have you to walk. And those are all going to be different. Everybody's going to have a different one. There's no right answer, no wrong answer. It's, you know, it's just kind of a personal thought. But, but it's, it's good to share because, you know, if, you know, if you don't walk in God's path, your whole life could be different, you know. Um, okay, this is going to be, this, should, this ought to be an easy one. But uh, number six. Number six, uh, Josh, would you read question number six for us, please? <clears throat> List four areas in which culture provides a path of immediate um, gratification, gratification when God says to wait for long-term blessings. Oh, yeah, we mentioned, we mentioned a few of them already. One of them for sure is, uh, I mentioned easy money, right? What is that? Uh, by the sweat of the brow, thou shalt uh, eat and, and think about the things of life. Uh, what, what's the problem with today's culture and uh, getting everything right away? I know mom and dad, you know what mom and dad told me when we got married? They said, we, we've been married 30 years and have what we have. You know what I mean? People, people what, what do some couples do nowadays? You don't want to do this, guys. Okay? But what, what do some couples do when they first get married? Put it on. Slide that credit card. They got the big house. They got all the cars and the boats and everything else. And then what? The stress of all that comes together, and there's a war, there's a battle, tension, unhappiness, and there's a consequence to that. So uh, there's, there's more. We're going to list some. Uh, these are all things that you can be thinking of and you can be jotting down because when we get to the end and we answer these, well, you'll, you'll be ahead. All right. Um, Oh, there are certainly many areas in life. Um, it says at least at least four, but I bet you we can come up with more. But there is definitely areas where God says wait for a long-term blessing, but Satan and the world will make it look like, hey, this is all right. It's going to be good. <clears throat> all right, last question. Well, that's an easy one, but we'll ask. We'll go ahead and read it real quick. What is question? What is question seven? Uh, John. <clears throat> Rate yourself on the five comparisons between immaturity and maturity. All right, so now this doesn't say grade the guy to your left or the person to your right or ahead of you. This is where you got to grade yourself, all right? So this is going to be, uh, this is going to be, you got to think about this in, in your own terms on this one for sure. And it might be a little harder. You got to be a little honest with yourself, right? All right, so we're going to go back to our book and uh, we're going to, number two, <coughs> excuse me. Number two uh, in our book. <clears throat> okay, we, we just talked, we were been talking about understanding the collective culture cola. And now we're talking about number two, we're going to start talking about mature and responsible. Mature and responsible. 
But before we can talk about mature and responsible, we better define what mature and responsible are. So what is the definition in your mind for mature? <clears throat> Anybody? Well, I, I only think of things in terms of construction, but the guy who's mature at the job looks out for all the people with less experience. Like, you have to make sure that you know, everything stays right on course as you're putting up the siding. So the guy with the most, who has done it the most, really, you got to make sure that everybody else all the way around the house is on the same page of the story. So he's, you understand what I'm saying? He's, he's responsible. Yeah. And he's responsible and he's overseeing everything. He's, right? overseeing. he's taking so on responsibility. Sure everything's going to happen. <clears throat> All right, and, a, and in that point, he is what? He is knowledgeable, and he's able to make good judgment, right? So we have the thought of um, <clears throat> having uh, the, the thought of, or having reached full mature growth or development, um, and able to make uh, wise and good choices, right? Okay, so how about responsible? What is, what is the definition for responsible? Okay, so you're done with that side, and it's an inch and a half off, and the boss comes around and says, okay, what's going on here? Well, then you're the guy who steps up and says, hey, you know, listen, the yeah, back side of the house was three inches, you know, whatever. And, yeah. You know, you just got to tell them what's, that's the guy. That's, um, you blame him on someone else. You, you well, blame no, him no. What I'm trying else. to say oh, is okay, he, no, he's no. the guy who takes on the responsibility yeah. Fixes it. He fixes it. Makes it right. Um, you have to be trustworthy. Responsible. You have to be trustworthy. Yeah, if you're going to be responsible, you're going to be trustworthy, and you're you're going to what? You're going to give an account, right? If you're responsible, that person that's overseeing that job, he's going to have to give an account to the boss or whoever uh, whoever is uh, whoever's in charge. But so responsibility has the thought of liable to be required to give an account. Um, uh, one that has been discharged or given um, duty or trust, um, and then uh, and then responsible given account for one's actions. All right. So mature and responsible. And it has to be, to be or not to be. What are you gonna be? You gotta pick a side, right? You gonna be mature and responsible. What are you gonna do? To be or not to be? Um, so we think about it. Uh, we live in a world where uh, young adults are more concerned with the kinds of cell phones and the kinds of care. Excuse me, trying to scare. Uh, we live in a world today where young adults are more concerned with the kind of cell phone they carry and have in their pocket than the kind of character they are developing or people are seeing. All right, they're more concerned about having fun and finding a purpose. We think about God's quest. We think about life quest. Is it living for God or is it living for you? Now, we can have fun for sure if it's living for God. Like I say, I, I, I can enjoy life and, and, and live for God. Um, they're wallowing in a pig pen, playing in the mud. Think about, uh, think about uh, they're having fun, but they're having trouble. Uh, what's an example in God's word? Uh, we have someone that, that had... Uh, was, I'm trying to think of some examples, so I don't give it all away, but I might as well give it away. He uh, wanted his inheritance, right? He's a prodigal son, right? He wanted his inheritance. He, then he found himself, he got his money, he got his inheritance, he spent it all foolishly, and what did he do? He found himself where? In the lowest of lows, eating out of a trough, looking, look, thinking it would be great to be eating out of a trough because he didn't have anything. And that's uh, We think about life today there. They're wallowing around in a pig pen, playing in the mud of life. Uh, when they could, when they were created to feast at the king's table, God has got a, in God's plans, and if we walk in God's, it doesn't mean it's all going to be easy and a cakewalk. But, but God has the best for us in His in His in our lives available if we live for Him and, and follow His way. But, uh, but they're playing in the pig pen of life rather than uh, eating at the king's table and living in His calling. Um, in, sh in short, they are choosing to stay immature and irresponsible. Ah, here's some questions. I'm going to ask these young guys in the back. Jacob's not here. I was going to pick on Jacob. I can be, you're young, too. I can pick on you guys, too. So let's think about this. How would you define maturity? What are some ways you would define maturity? Mm, 
being able to know when to just listen rather than to speak. Listen or speak, all right? Um, would you define maturity as, I am so old. How, what's the age of maturity? Is there an age that you can define maturity? There's really no age. You can't say, well, I'm 16 or I'm 18 and I'm mature now. Now how it works. So uh, is it age? Um, how about some other thoughts? What are some things that come up in people's lives when they think, I'm mature now? What's one of the first things we get to do as teenagers growing up? Ah, Daniel's doing this. He's doing, he's doing, see, yeah, left, he's driving left handed. I drive left handed too. So, okay, so here we are driving. That means I'm mature now, don't it? Is that what that means? No? Okay, all right. So, uh, how about, uh, huh? Hopefully you're a little mature. Hopefully you're a little mature, but I think so. There's a lot of people driving today that maybe ought not be. But just because you turn a certain age, um, that doesn't mean uh, you're mature. So uh, driving a car, how about, oh, I have a job, I'm mature, right? Is that what that means? Just, so how do we define mature? <clears throat> All right, well, um, so maturity is not defined by age or your status in life or your ability to, to have the, the, a license to drive a car or maybe you have a job. What does maturity actually look like? What does maturity look like? And well, let's think about this because it might shatter some preconceived ideas of what maturity is. But quite simply, it's the acceptance of responsibility. Now, there is maturity in driving a car. And there is maturity at a certain age. But what does that look like? We're going to talk about that. Um, let's see here. Uh, maturity shows up in a person's life not because they arrived at a certain age or they're able to drive a car or maybe they're, they're, they're dating, right? Or maybe they're, they're courting someone or seeing someone. That does not, that does not uh, mean they're, um, they're, uh, they're mature. Maturity begins, um, maturity begins uh, when one begins to truly own and accept God-given responsibilities that he has given us in our lives. Um, wow, all right? Um, Let's see here. Let's give, I wanted to give a couple assignments here. Well, just some thought. I'm just not really an assignment, but be thinking about it. Okay? For example, driving a car. You might be mature driving a car, but what does that look like to you? I'm going to give you uh, one, two, three. I'll give you three things. Okay? So, I'll, I'll, and I'll give you an example. Um, and I just think, be thinking about it. So driving a car. If you're mature and responsible for driving a car, what goes along with that? Driving a car. One, you're what? Wearing your seatbelt. Well, you're wearing a seatbelt. Yeah, that's, that's tough. That's tough. I still don't that. But, but for example, I'll give you an example. An example of that is you're responsible for other people in that car. Right? Okay, so that's kind of the thought. So. Now, if you want to write these down, driving a car, age, and working a job. So what are some responsible things that go along with those three items? So like I said, if, you, if you're going to drive a car and you're mature, you need to know that this is a big deal here, and I'm responsible for these other people in my car. All right? So just try to drive these things down, okay? I want you guys to kind of get an idea. What is what? What is, we want to kind of really get an idea of what maturity is and irresponsibility or, or not taking responsibility is, all right? So somebody that's driving a car that's irresponsible or not mature, they're going to be reckless. They're not going to care about the other people around them. They're going to, they're going to be foolish, right? So just, let's think of those things and we'll be back next week. And we'll keep going in our life quest, all right? Meanwhile, you guys keep don't have to spin thing. Just, just live, live to the book. Don't, don't spin the spinner dial and go spaces, but look in God's book. And listen to the Holy Spirit. Let him lead you in your life quest. All right. Now, with that, we'll close in prayer. Um, uh, Brother Matthew, please, if you close in prayer.